Hello, friends and foes, fays and fiends, and welcome to Quests and Chaos. My name is Alondra Heilman, my pronouns are she, her, and tonight I will be your heist handler as we continue our playthrough of Keys from the Golden Vault. Tonight, we are starting an all new module. This is part one of module three, Reach for the Stars. But as always, before we get into the module, uh, if my players manage to recover, they're working on it, uh, we are going to introduce uh, the players at the table. Don't worry about your characters, we'll get to them shortly. Uh, starting over here, please give us your name and your pronouns. I don't think it's fair that Alondra's the only one that gets a confidence monitor. I'm gonna start there. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna see how I look too, by the way, and it's really fucking hard. So if you'd like to donate bits to help <laughs> with uh, War and a Confidence Monitor. I'm Warren. Uh, I'm Warren, yeah. All right. I'm Thomas. He, him. He, him as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's new. It's okay. Hi, I am James. He, him as well. Hi, I'm Cal, and I use they, them pronouns. I'm Nick, and... This time I am gonna be hee haw. Yes. 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 See, I like it. I like yee haw better. <laughs> okay. Okay. Adjustment to that. Yee haw. There we go. All right. I will update my notes. Um, <laughs> and of course, next in my notes, uh, I just want to uh, uh, woo have a full dip out as I readjust my monitor. Um, before we dive in, we are going to uh, acknowledge some of our friends of the channel. First of all, we always have to shout out. Nord Games with their URL that we all love to say. Say it with me. NordGamesLLC.com forward slash three dot HTML. James is much more efficient than I am remembering to acknowledge the forward slash. That's right. Yeah. Nord Games is awesome. They make uh, supplements for DD 5e and system agnostic supplements that you can use to uh, enhance your home games. Uh, you can uh, use that link if you remember it. You can also put, uh, I believe, exclamation mark Nord Games in the chat on Twitch to see it again. Um, if you use that link, we get a little kickback, you get cool stuff, and everybody wins. Uh, tonight, of course, we are also sponsored by everybody's favorite, the Deck of Inspiration. Ooh. You can get your own copy of the Deck of Inspiration by going to shop.questsandchaos.com or if you are local to the San Francisco Bay Area, you can go to any of the ABC Games locations. That's King Kong Games in Dublin, and that's Antioch. No, no, no Antioch. No. Brentwood Games, Brent Brentwood, Concord. Concord. King Kong Games, Martinez. Martinez. Sorry, I thought Martinez was the one to close. Antioch yes. is closed currently. Martinez yes. is open. And just today, the first deck is also on Roll20. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. So, and if you want PDFs, those are on Drive-Thru RPG. Yeah, so many places. You can get all of these cool decks to enhance your own home game. I have... Uh, the deck right here that we'll be using. We're still in the level one through four deck. I also have the deck of an uninspiration, which has not yet been broken out, but I, I think the the, 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 the pre-stream shenanigans might require there, a random card maybe 30 minutes into the session. There was a lot of shenanigans happening earlier, so you guys might just also this is the kind of module where you might just need a little additional chaos. What were the shenanigans? <laughs> no, I'll tell you when you're older. <laughs> uh, but to start with, uh, we have some cards granted to us by our wonderful patrons. First of all, we've got uh, some cards from Squeal the Bard. We've got, of course, one for the players and one for me. Which one do you want, left or right? Which one's better? Your, I didn't actually read them. your right, my left. This one? Hey. There is Endurance. Drinking this tonic grants the user advantage on constitution, constitution checks for 10 minutes. Or you may use a reaction to drink this potion for advantage on a single constitution-based saving throw. Mm. Are those berries floating in there? <laughs> uh, I know that we, we have the opportunity to wait and mm -hmm. choose a card, but I would love that card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would you? Yes. I'm happy to give it to you if that is amenable to the entire party. Once we've distributed all the what cards, what has your character can... eaten recently? <laughs> <laughs> Berries, obviously. I'm gonna hold my vote. Uh, okay. okay, it's it's available then. What is it worth to you? <laughs> <laughs> I think well, we have more we cards. Got some more coming. Uh, uh, I re um, I received surgical strike. Just like to keep it honest by letting you all know what I've got. Right. Don't worry, I never use my cards. Wink. Um, all right, uh, Warren. 
Which one do you want? <gasps> it just means you have to read it out loud. So. Jeffrey, 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 Jeffrey. Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's. This go. is from Cheesecake <laughs> Fries again. Thank one for the players so and Cheesecake one for me. Fries. Yum. For the vital strike, you may re-roll any number of damage dice on a single attack or spell. Mm -hmm. You must use the second roll. Yeah. I saw a fighter do this once. Mm -hmm. And I got That's every Fireball. GM's favorite card, Magical Key. Uh, <laughs> yay! It's almost as good as Guiding Light. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm tempted. Mm -hmm. Hear me out. Fortuitous, sir. Make me, make me a pitch. <clears throat> um, you don't have to implement it here and uh -huh. now. Uh -huh. I'm tempted, as the GM, if you get a card that is useless for a GM, mm -hmm. give it to the players and you draw again. Just a thought. Just throwing that out there. That's too nice to the players. Just draw again. You know, Don't give them the satisfaction. Well, here's the thing. Um, you can I, only do that I once I have again. the keys to all of the doors, and also I have the keys to the golden vault because I'm the GM. So I do feel like it's a little unfair for me to keep this. Although, to be fair, I was tempted to not give you guys your card from Cheesecake Fries since it was given for bathroom shenanigans, which there will be none of <laughs> in my good Christian oh, my. Minecraft server this week. Um, but that's, I think that's a fair... Really hoping for some you can't stop us from doing I that. I think you <laughs> should be able to pick a new card. Yeah, yeah. But not give it to us. And let's be honest. Because that's not fair. Deck of uninspiration. We've Any, been waiting far too long. <laughs> Any room's a bathroom. Oh, God. <laughs> there will be bathroom shenanigans. No. <laughs> DUIs for everyone at the table. Okay. <laughs> Oh boy. All right, well, for now, I'm pretty sure we've got some bits, which you guys might want to buy some cards with. So let's go ahead and do some bits really quick. We're swiftly losing my ability to keep my intro to seven minutes. Explain this buy cards mechanic to me again. So, uh, bits, uh, 500 bits gets you uh, an inspiration. For 1,000 bits, once I've distributed them, you guys can buy another card. A random card? Yes. What? Thomas is really nice and like mm -hmm. gives you two and lets you choose. I just pull them out of the deck and throw them at you to save time. How about for 750 bits, you lay out four and we pick one of them. How do oh, I split this bit in half, Warren? God. We can figure it out. You're gonna have to buy two at a time then. Or I can give you 150 and then you There's can- There's a lot of negotiating you happening, just, guys. This is-, this is I feel like why the intros take 20 minutes. I feel like the goddess is gonna just kill us, this so. Is, this is why the DOI deck was invented. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, our tavern upkeep is now up to 52% thanks to generosity, and we do have some bits that might get turned into cards, or I might be fighting someone out behind the dumpster at break. We'll find <laughs> out. Um, first, we have 1,000 bits from Duke Fleeg to the players. Oh, thank you, thank you, you Grace. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next, we have 1,000 bits from Vanna Lossman for oh. me. Aww. Thank you. Don't think this means I won't kill you next time you're back on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we have uh, 1,000 bits from the Baroness. 500 what? to the players. Thank you, Baroness. Thank you. And 500 for me. Uh, uh, less thank you, but still thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, do you guys want to just hang on to your bits, or do you want to buy cards? Since I made that whole big deal out of it because we were talking about cards, but we should wait till we're desperate. We got fifteen hundred. All right, so now's where the negotiation. <laughs> oh God! So last time <laughs> on uh, Keys from the Golden Vault, our humble operatives were assembled. They were sent on a mission of righteous revenge to rob a casino found on ill-gotten gains. The crew took a few detours through the, uh, fight for you, war, the fight for worker unionization, some light to mid-tier vandalism, confronting a latent gambling addiction, and negotiating for information with a very attractive but disconcertingly sketchy patron of the casino. However, they eventually succeeded in their mi mission and were able to celebrate with drinks from Dave, the ever-present hipster bartender. How long is his beard? I just have to jump in no there. Beard. All, all of the dead and dying animatronics uh. at the end. I think I think it's a little more than like mid to light vandalism. That's just my. That's uh, true. You did flood and wreck the entire yeah. casino yeah. and destroy all of the animatronics. It was Oops. truly a. It went from Chuck E. Cheese to Five Nights at Freddy's very fast. <laughs> well, now some time has passed for our operatives. However, the Golden Vault never sleeps as they keep their watch over the plains and their stirrings. And today, one of those stirrings has started to draw the attention 
of the mysterious masters of the vault. Stirrings is something old, something dangerous, and something that should not be in motion. For this, new reinforcements must be called. Powerful and experienced operatives. But all they've got is the stupid rabbit, so it seems they're gonna have to settle for whatever he brings along. <laughs> he is wise in all things. Uh, it has been... Hmm? Did you curse your dice? Several, uh... You're adopted and no one loves you. <laughs> wow. Uh, it has been, uh, s probably a couple of months since the Vanderheim Museum heist. Uh, Stuart Shawnery, what have you been up to? Well, I've been dabbling in, um, <clears throat> I found, I found a book in the library. And I've been dabbling. Hmm. I've been learning a few things here and there, and some parlor tricks. Excellent. Uh, have you been keeping up with Clark? Uh, or I have. Uh, he has not noticed, though, because I've been disguised magically. <laughs> Amazing. Um, one day, as you're uh, going about your, your normal sort of rounds in the city, kind of checking up on things, probably taking some notes outside City Hall, checking in with Mira, perhaps, um, you feel a weird uh, buzzing in your pocket. Oh. You reach in, you pull out the business card from uh, Priscilla Taiga with the golden key on the back. You see that's sort of like vibrating and the key is glowing. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, what was the name of that bar? <laughs> the Shady Shenanigans. No, the sh Shellfish... No. Uh, suddenly, the <laughs> card uh, stops buzzing. It's a little glow, and with a little, you disappear as you teleport. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I don't have to remember the name of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Sloane, mm. it's been a little less time for you since your last uh, mission. You've uh, you've made it back. Uh, despite all of the wonderful transit that was provided to get you up the Sword Coast uh, to the casino, you did not have transportation back, so there was probably a little bit of a road trip uh, to return to your shop. Um, but you know, uh, Dave's not the worst travel companion. Yes! He also had to get back to work. Okay. Um, Gemma rode along with you for part of the way until her mom called and she was like, I have to go deal with this and vanished into her ring. Um, but you've been back for, you know, maybe a month. Things have settled in. Anything interesting that you've been doing in this time? Yeah, um, I definitely think that on the way back, Sloane and Deirdre exchanged uh, information and talked, uh, she talked uh, to Sloane about like, what does it mean to um, sort of engage with this habit of yours in a way that feels healthy. I know you have a friend that you're, you're teaching how to play Three Dragon Ante to, how are you feeling about that? And like just trying to, trying to message back and forth and uh, stay, stay within the zone of tolerance for Sloane. Um, when they got back, they started tinkering with some of their armor, um, and they asked, they kind of put out their feelers and asked PD to find an opal for them. And they um, have been creating this uh, gauntlet that kind of goes with their armor, and then there's an opal in, like, in the palm, but it's been sliced straight through, so it's very thin. Um, so they have some, some cool, like, mods to their armor now. Excellent. Um, one day, as you're working in the shop, you know, just as you normally do, um, you hear the little bell jingle, someone comes in, and you look up, and it's Petey. Oh! Uh, kind of gives you the, like, hey, um, so kind of a weird, kind of a weird one. Okay. Uh, you know that friend of yours with the really, like, white hair, real tall elf lady? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she stopped by my place, which is weird because nobody knows where my place is. Yeah, that's uh -huh. very yeah. weird. And she gave me... She knows where your place is? I don't even know. I've known you for how many years? Right, that's what I'm saying. Nobody knows where my place I've is. I've never even been to your house. I. You don't want to come to my house. It's a mess. But... 
She apparently knows where my place is. And uh, she stopped by and she asked me to bring you this. And he holds up a physical golden key with like a, like a woman's head where the uh, hasp would be. And she told me to tell you that you'd be getting visitors looking for this. Okay. I and I'll take the key from Petey. <laughs> Who just shrugs like, I don't know what to tell you. That's so weird. All of that, all of that shit is so weird. Yeah, I don't know. She's weird. I don't get it. Okay, but you're cool, right? Everything's good? Oh, no, I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, no, it's all good. Okay, all right. Well, you let me know if you need anything, you know. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just, Thanks, Petey. Yeah. Do you, you want a glass of water or anything before you go? Oh, no, I'm good. I'm going to go meet some friends at the bar. Okay, awesome. Have a great time. Yeah, cool. If you don't disappear again, I'll maybe see you later. Yeah, definitely. We'll meet for drinks at some time. All right. Uh, Petey uh, dodges out and just... Maybe not literally vanishes, but at least metaphorically <laughs> vanishes this like scruffy little dwarf teenager who you're not sure how old they are, but whatever. <laughs> Minwoo, what is your normal day to day, you know, life like right now? What are you doing these days in particular? It's been a while since your last job. Yeah, no, uh, Minwoo, he, uh, he starts his day as he normally does, pops out a sending stone from his pocket, just says a few words of just saying like, hey, uh, just heading out, just wanted to let you know that everything is good. Yeah, okay. Pops it in his pocket and, you know, does his morning stretches cause he's a little on the uh, older side for most adventurers. He's uh, in his mid thirties, so you know, he's not dead yet. <laughs> Um, but just barely. <laughs> just barely. You do see a little bit of weight on his shoulders, and time has kind of made a furrow in his brow. Um, he's got scruff, and it's been a while since he's uh, cut his hair. It's got a good um, mop going <laughs> that, eh, who, who knows the last time he's bathed. He's not gross, but he's... Um, you know, he's, he's a working man, and when he's not doing any jobs, he does find himself near the piers, near the water, just getting out there and doing some doing some work with some sailors and doing some fishing. And then bring him back the hall, get as much money as he can for the day, and then head back and just start the day over again like clockwork until something new comes in. Well, today you're down by the, by the piers. It's a lovely day, and... Uh... Lynn sidles up next to you. I haven't seen them in a while. They've been out on one of the boats. Maybe came back in a couple days ago. It was probably that wave across the docks mm. while things were unloading. Lynn sidles up and goes, Hey, uh, you, uh, you want a job right now? I mean, I just finished one, so I guess I could do another. You mind traveling? No, not at all. I uh, heard tell if you head up to the city and go to this address, there's a job for you. You're gonna need to take that little box of yours, though. It's one of those. Okay, uh, I'll get outfitted and head on up. You, uh, you need anything special? I mean, I don't, I don't have a lot in stock right now, but you know, if you need something that you need other people not to know about, I've got, got a couple things. Uh, just a standard potion, pop it in the bag. Yeah, I can hook you up. Uh, swing by your house in hour? Drop yeah, out? Yeah, 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, heads out, heads to home, loads up with a leather, uh, leather curry, le leather curry has got a little bit of a shine on it, pops a trident on his back, um, gets his packs all ready, and then he pops out this little box that's uh, with a gold rim, um, wood finish and all that. Pops out, it's got some nice little filigree. Um, takes it, pops it in the bag, waits for Linda, pop back. Takes him like 15 minutes to get ready. Yeah, uh, yeah. you probably have to spend a good 10, 15 minutes just waiting, but sure enough, Lynn swings by, tosses you the potion. Mm -hmm. Stay safe, you know how to get in touch. I mean, if it's one of those jobs where you can get in touch. Eh, never know with these ones, so. 
Catch you later. See you around. And you set off for the city. Tamalak, what are you up to these days? It's probably been only a week since your last job, uh, but it was a pretty easy one. Had to go, you know, shake down some guys. Little, little bit of coercion, little bit of uh-uh-uh. They seemed pretty amenable to seeing things your way. And uh... um, in the downtime, Tamalak can be found on the outskirts of the city as a farmhand, uh, mostly helping to herd cattle and do odd jobs around until bigger paying work comes through, um, which is he feels reduced to, especially at his age, uh, an older half-orc male, uh, greenish, beigeous skin, uh, salt pepper hair, wandering around the soft soil, using a cane to help him get footing and constantly checking over his shoulder, uh, sitting down on the side of uh, a barn and just kind of taking a deep breath in and um, just valuing the piece. And also uh, when he sits down, he kind of like stretches and removes and adjusts some bandages around his stomach um, and just looks out at the farm with the city in the distance, not so far horizon, but far enough that uh, people he's crossed, probably he could see coming a mile away. Yeah. As you're sitting, just taking in the moment, having a little bit of a rest, you do see someone that you recognize. Thankfully, no one that you've had uh, come across before, but, but someone you've worked with, in fact. Uh, as you see uh, Min Wu, Coming down. You haven't seen uh, Minwoo since that uh, that weird job with the underwater thing. Great. Hey, buddy. Did our last engagement lead you to believe we were friends? <laughs> uh, no, that's kind of the greeting I give to everyone, buddy. I'm not your buddy guy. What do you want? Another job. Good one. You're just the messenger, right? You're not also accompanying me on this job. Unfortunately, it is one of the requirements. What is it? As per usual, not a lot of info. Who for? Not a lot of info. I'm sure it's a get there, we'll find out, and we're already tough for the job, so we just go. Um, how tall are you? Uh, Minwoo, he's about 5'7". Uh, Tomalak gets up from the bench with a groan, <clears throat> holding his cane in one hand, and he stretches, and as he towers over you at 6'5", mm -hmm. um, but leans on the cane, bringing him back down to about 6'2". <laughs> uh, suppose... Anything's better than the farm life. Hey, that's what I say about the sea, and yet it keeps bringing me back. When do we start? And now, now. Uh, he, he turns as if to uh, yell at the housekeepers, and they're on the other side of uh, They'll get the gist of it. <laughs> um, he walks into the side of the bar. Well, he kind of somberly slowly limps into the side of the barn, uh, and he picks up a light duffel satchel, and he throws over his shoulder that you can kind of hear, Ch -ch -ch, and some items and things in there. You can tell it's just kind of hefty with normal wares. Um, and he says, let's go. Onward. Are we walking the entire way? Uh, yeah. I'd didn't exactly receive a lot on the last shipment through, so I've just been my own horse, if you know what I mean. Uh, Tomalak <laughs> walks off in the direction of the city without him. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, horse? Are you a horse? <laughs> Are you a horse? You're not a horse. No, I'm a human. I okay. forgot to state yeah. that. <laughs> no, no, no. Alondra does not allow centaur player characters in her games. Yes, you know, uh, me on the sea high seas as a centaur. <laughs> I love climbing up the crow's nest. Uh, Stuart. Give me constitution saving throw. Oh, uh, <laughs> can I use the card? <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's just to see how sick you get when you come out of the teleport. It will have no other consequences than what? my joy. Not bad, 16. 16, a little, little, little queasy. It's always <laughs> weird when you teleport unexpectedly and haven't been warned. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that little like royal in your stomach. But you're fine. You have found yourself uh, kind of in the outskirts of the city, like on the opposite side from where you were. Um, near uh, a pretty, like, kind of run-down area. You've probably patrolled here before, back mm -hmm. when you were still on the city watch. Um, and uh, you've got not a whole lot of movement, but there's definitely some, and some of that movement is coming from Devin. Devin, what are you doing this afternoon? Where am I at? You're in the outskirts of the city. Oh. So, you know. Have things not gone well? <laughs> it's, it's been peaks and dips ever since you got back uh, from that. You know, you ate really well on the free tapas uh, for a while, yeah, but that only I lasts for so for as long as I could. Yeah. I mean, angels are known for their generosity, and I milked that for every. Day. I mean, once Dave had to leave and head back, you know, you were kind of out of luck. You followed him. He lets you come hang out at the bar sometimes, but I I might be um making a meal. Okay. Of sorts. Are you in the dumpster or next to it today? Oh, I take everything away from the dumpster, okay. clean it up, and then... Yeah. So you're out assembling everything you're gonna together. Name, you're going to need to make another con check. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but yeah, you uh, you see this uh, kind of... Uh, 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 Do I see him up here? Oh, you definitely see him just kind of like pop into the middle of the road. <laughs> uh, this... Yes. Oh, hello oh, oh there. Ah, uh, that. Uh, hello. What? what? <laughs> do I recognize? But do I recognize that kind of teleportation? Oh, you like, certainly. Does he see. have the card in his hand? You, he does still have yes. the card in his hand. <gasps> do I? Do I sense anyone else nearby? I perk up. Uh, roll me a perception. Oh, Devin's getting very excited. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that is a uh, twenty. Math three? No, two? <laughs> two. Uh, it's over 22. a 20. Oh yeah, you, <laughs> oh, feel, yes. you feel the tingle. You feel the tingle and it's oh. getting closer. Oh, Lord Hy Count Hyacinth approaches. Oh, he's come to save me from this horrible life. You know, you, you know Hyacinth. <laughs> yes, oh. yeah, I assume you do as well. We've met. <laughs> Briefly, I mean, we've not conversed at all or had any sort of, uh, he's a cat, oh. you know. <laughs> no, what, no, he's a, he's in the form of a rabbit. And, That's right, he's a rabbit. And he's, <laughs> if you do get the chance to talk to him, he's quite charming. Well, you I'm would not, certainly remember. I do not speak rabbit or he cat for that uh, matter. You hear a voice in your head. He, he doesn't speak conventionally. You hear a voice in your head. <laughs> Neither do I. Well, there you go. Oh, wait a minute. No, I did not take message. Never mind. I just, I think, you... I think that I am. Uh, no, oh, I can no, respond no, 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 to the message. I, and I'm just watching you, like your mouth, like your jaw moving. And... <laughs> <laughs> just kind of staring. It's gone. Yeah. Any, any, anyway, um, um, are you with the, um, are you with the, uh, the golden vault? Well, I I was, um, I'm I'm hoping to get back in with them. What did you do? Well, uh, back back far back in the day, um, I I was mostly just a like lookout. I I watched for things as we uh, as we traveled the plains, um, and then recently, um, we tried to do a heist on a casino. I was there for that. <laughs> oh, very well. Hmm. Good. But but 
looking around for. Yeah. Uh, no, you feel it getting getting closer and closer as you feel the warmth of the greeting. I, oh, I try to clean myself off as oh. much as possible. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> Prestidigitation. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, Stuart uh, helps Devin clean up just as you see hopping down the middle of the street without a care in the world like nothing else is going on. A little black and white rabbit. Yes. <laughs> it's not a cat. <laughs> uh hops up right up to you guys, bears a big pointy-toothed grin at you in the most unsettling or delightful way, delightful. depending on how you look at it. Um, hops up, tugs at the like hem of your pants, Stuart, and hops off down with a follow me, sort of. Well, you heard him. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did he speak to you? Oh, is he not? He tugged yeah. on my pants. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, follow the rabbit, as they say. And uh, you proceed down the street. Of course, as everyone has guessed, uh, suddenly our uh, four gentlemen, two from one path, two from another, converge. Has the shield been painted yet, or do you want us to roll that when I've got that done? Um, because I, Devin would definitely take off. He'd have the shield on his back, and he would see the, sh the crest on the back of the shield. Would you have uh, gone to visit Sloane? Well, I would have done that early after. I would have been excited. Oh, like, you guys oh, he's probably did it back. before he's you left. Back. You guys probably did it before you left uh, after and then the he casino didn't come heist. Back for so me. yeah, yeah, no, you totally see this uh, this guy's shield painted with a glorious crest. Oh, did you bless me? Yeah. When I did this. So Is that a D four? Did we're, you say advantage as well? Uh, yeah. Proficiency, advantage, guidance. I just want to see how glorious this crest actually is. Yeah, take that one. <laughs> <laughs> and did you did you want a dex or a performance? Um, use your tool proficiency. Oh. Okay. Unless you want to make an argument for something that's better. Um, no, I think that's fine. You're rolling for my amusement on this, not because um, it's going to make a huge difference. Actually, I don't know what. I mean, fourteen's not bad. That's better than I would. It's better than average. That's yeah. competent. I think I would just add my proficiency bonus yeah. plus oh, nice. my dexterity. No? For like... Sure, you're painting. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, then that's... It's like 19, right? Yeah. 19. Yeah, 19. Oh. 19. Uh, it is indeed a glorious image. Would you like to describe the image that is painted on the back of your shield? I do it exactly the way that you want me to do it. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it, is, it is the... He's majestic. He's... he's uh, it's Hyacinth, of course, on the back of the shield. And he's he's sitting, but he has head turned up so that he's listening. He's ever he's ever watchful. And then in one corner, there's the actual like a a pair of hyacinth flowers and a little arc, and in the bottom, a golden key. Oh. You could have turned around, and then I would have seen that. Well, that's he, he walks in front of you, and he has it yeah. on his back. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay then. Do He's not showing it off, you just notice it. We cross them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So coming from uh, up one side of the road, uh, Devon and Stuart. Uh, coming from the other side, Minwu and Tamalak, as you all arrive in front of this shop. Tamalak is mid-conversation with Minwu. Mm -hmm. I did not um, receive my golden box for the summons, so I assume I'm not meant to be on this mission. You just need the assistance due to your inferiority. Hey, I mean, even if it is inferiority, you did come along. Boredom is a strong driver. Indeed, as he does pull out the box and then notices the... These two, and of course you notice the rabbit with the big pointy teeth. Oh, hey, little guy, how you doing? And just like goes down and just starts scritching mm -hmm. the rabbit on the head. Oh, you definitely get that that little like leaning into the scritch sort mm -hmm. of reaction. Hmm. Uh, sorry, is this your <laughs> rabbit? No, that's, no, oh, no. <laughs> oh, if anything, we are his, um, not, not rabbits, but no, that is, that is Count Hyacinth. 
Leave the rabbit alone. These people are suffering from delirium. Let's mm. get on. Slow. You hear a lot of conversation suddenly mm. congregate. I mean, get on. The, the, I think I'm in mid conversation right with a customer. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, so that that is a beautiful metal for your skin to... Can I... Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. You know, uh, I'm going to... Uh, Johnny, can you... I'm, I'm going to have you speak with Johnny for just a second. Yeah, Johnny pops out and, and catches your eye and sees the immune and just like, right over this way. I've got so many more of the white gold that I can show you. Just come on right over here. <laughs> Outside. Oh, my God. Sloan's inside. <laughs> I, Wait, was that a schlong? Oh, schlong. so so uh, <laughs> I, uh, Stuart runs in, busts the door open, goes, Schlone, it's Stuart. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hi, Stuart. Tell me, how's it going? Is this our destination? It is. <laughs> I it's been a long time. Yeah. What's the commotion outside? Uh, What's going on? You're gonna scare away our business. Oh, we're just uh, we're looking. Uh, there's uh, uh, plenty of things afoot. Uh, Johnny over the corner is just like, and you know what? I have a piece in the back that you should absolutely come look at. It's not finished yet, so you should get and, like fully clogged and just like let's go. <laughs> drags hey. the customer into the back. Johnny. Uh, pleasure to meet you, Sloan. Uh, it's Minwoo. It's Sloan. Just Sloan. a Sloan. Yeah, that's um. That's Stuart's accent. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. So it's not Stuart, it's Stuart. <laughs> yeah, Stuart. <laughs> Stuart. <laughs> Stuart Shonery, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's Stuart Shonery. And you have Minwoo. Fuck uh, yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. What did we get? DUI. First, the first on the game. First on the channel, yeah, everybody. Not D Dark Vision. Oh no. For the next hour, creatures with dark vision only see in vibrant technicolor. <laughs> they have disadvantage on all <laughs> roles that require sight. Does that happen immediately? <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's late afternoon, so as the sun continues to go down, a couple of you might have a little bit of a fun uh, experience. Ow. This is only for one person, right? That's okay. everyone. Oh, that's the hey. table, homies. Oh, really? Hey, yeah. humans, no Creatures. dark vision. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Ow. I think that's, Ow. A, that's a Sloan and Tamalak who are going to be dealing with that. And, and actually Hyacinth. <laughs> Why do we got to suffer? <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least job. it's not like that to Baxi on the last job. Couldn't swim. <clears throat> Jesus. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I, I'm assuming you were... Are, are these your friends? I, I think there are new. Um, oh my God! Treats. It's Devin. Hi. Look! Look! He, this gentleman, cleaned the sheet. <gasps> it still looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. oh, I think they all know them. each other. <laughs> yep. Little. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly. Okay. We got a shellac. I, I know Shlon. Mm -hmm. We've. Uh, we. You know. We've. Um, we. You know. We saved the world together once. Oh, okay. that. Uh, yeah. At this point, Hyacinth pops in, hops up to you, Sloan, and like kind of sits up and oh, like hi. grins. Hi, little guy. How's it going? Give it a little head scratch. Uh, and then goes over to you, Minwoo, and sort of like pause at you a little bit. Oh. I... Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um. Let's all come inside, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yep. Cool. I'm gonna kind of like lead them into the shop into like my office. It's yeah. Super messy. There's just shit everywhere. I'm gonna kind of shove stuff off of chairs. How big's your office? Uh, <laughs> it's not it's very big. It's real tight it's, with five people. It's very tight with five people. I'll today. stand in the door. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, what form is Theo in today? Um, I think Theo is back in um, snake form. Today. Cool. Uh, yeah. Theo uh, uh, like slither, slithers off of the little pillow where he like sleeps in the sun on your desk and like slithers over to like see everybody. <laughs> yeah. So cute. This is a little, for those of you who are who are uh, seeing this for the first time, you basically walked into like the mad tinkerer's workshop, a bunch of them showed around and the little like mechanical snake comes slithering up to say hi. Oh, uh, he doesn't bite. I'm less provoked. So, you know, just don't step on him and he'll be fine. No, that's fine. I'm just wondering. I'm seeing a lot of animals. Is this an animal job? Do we have to like smuggle some? No. I don't is the so. rabbit real? Uh, you'd have to ask Priscilla. Do you know Priscilla? No. Are you Priscilla? Uh, no. no. Uh, Devin seems to know him quite well. Or no, the rabbit, yes. Mm -hmm. The rabbit's Priscilla. No, no the rabbit. 
travels <laughs> with Priscilla and is a herald of sorts for our friends with the shiny keys. Uh, Tomalak leans in close through the door to Minwu. The rabbit has a herald. No, is a herald. <laughs> Is a herald. Whoa. Of sorts. I would put it the other way around. Priscilla's a herald of the rabbit? Well, he's, well, he's the regent for her wild things. This I can't talk about that. This endeavor is much more your speed. Yeah, this is really climbing up there with the underwater. One. I, uh, <laughs> it seems as though we've all been brought together for a job for the Golden Vault. I assume the two of you are familiar? I am. Mm -hmm. Who's looking for 15 gold? Uh, That's a lot of gold! <laughs> <laughs> Minwu and Tamil, like you look at each other, you absolutely made 100 gold on the last job mm -hmm. you did. <laughs> each 100 gold. Yeah, that... <clears throat> is that the base rate for your, the jobs that you all do? I tend to try and go for something a little higher. I, mean, I, mean, I don't know the rate, I'm not... 100 was the last... All I know is I'm gonna, and uh, I'm gonna kind of dig through some drawers, <laughs> yeah. some papers are gonna fly around, because literally they just chucked this key in the yeah. office. Uh, Theo immediately like figures out what you're doing and starts like, like wraps his tail around a knob, pulls a drawer out, slithers in, starts like sliding through all the stuff, looking for things. <laughs> and then I'm gonna pull out that key with the uh, woman's head for the handle. Uh, this was delivered to me by contact from Priscilla Tyga, who is mm. our handler. Um, uh, does that look familiar? familiar? You have absolutely seen keys like this before. This is very familiar. This uh, usually shows up, and then when you insert it into your box, <laughs> it is the only time your box opens and you are given instructions. Okay. Holds up a little <laughs> higher the music box and then actually examines it, and on the bottom is the similar face of the woman <clears> and <throat> pops it in. That makes a lot of sense. You hear the ticking of gears, and the box furls open. A little bit of a soft glow, a gentle, almost like scent of summer flowers comes out. Something very just calm and peaceful, a little bit of a golden light. And you just hear a voice from the box. Greetings, operatives. Vassal Talistrom, a sage who works with the Golden Vault, has reported the theft of the Celestial Codex. This book contains rituals that, in the wrong hands, could be used to summon dangerous extraplanar entities. The book was stolen by a nobleman named Marcus Delphi, who might be under the influence of some profane entity. Four adventurers hired to retrieve the book from Delphi Mansion have disappeared without a trace. We have good reason to believe they are dead. This quest, should you choose to undertake it, requires you to travel to Delphi Mansion and retrieve the Celestial Codex. May you fare better than the last group. Good luck, operatives. We'll give oh. you 500 gold. Is that written down there next? I mean, it's... it's... Are you hurting for money? Because, like, I got a few oh, odds I, mean, I could no, I mean, I can, pick you away. Just, yes. I feel like I was very... Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, not as compensated as I should have been for the first gig, but uh, I mean, I, I've learned a lot since then. I mean, that was many, uh, many experiences ago. What was the name of the, the person, Vassal? Vassal Talistrom. Talistrom. Um, and actually, Stuart, go ahead and give me a history roll on that name. Stuart. Stuart. Mm, history is 12. 12. Um, you have heard this name before. You don't necessarily remember a lot about mm -hmm. him, but you know, I mean, he is a prominent mage in the city. Oh. Um, so you know that he, like, he is a person of influence and import enough that you just recognize his name as that. Yes, uh, Teststorm. So. Um, mage, mage. Oh, I'm a mage now. Uh, anyway. Hi, um, you what? Oh, uh, yes, I, I've been studying. That's exciting. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, they said four adventurers were killed already in this venture. Um, Seems that's why they bumped us up to five and a rabbit. Did yeah. they, though? A rabbit doesn't usually bump us to five. Uh, yeah. You see, as you ask that question, Hyacinth nods very emphatically. 
Is that the rabbit? Yes, that is the rabbit, who has jumped up and is now sitting on the desk uh, next to Theo. The rabbit apparently thinks so. Great. Sorry, I didn't get your name. Tomalak. Tomalak. Yes. Nice to meet you. Likewise, I hope to see your friendship through long enough for it to be worth remembering. I Given that, that we're being led by a rabbit and someone who just discovered they were a mage. Oh, I, I don't think I'm leading anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're the only one who recognized the name of Talistrum, so. Well, I mean, you know, he's, he's got a big mansion. Uh, important. We have to guard certain things. I mean, back when I was with the city guard, we had to watch things. A defunct city guard who's <laughs> now a mage. First off, <laughs> the elite in this town are terrible people. Uh, they, we, should, we should really be tearing them down. Uncovering the corruption. And apparently stealing codexes. From There's them. a like little like burst of electricity as um, uh, Sloane is like has completely done something different and is working in the corner <laughs> and like, ah, fuck, fuck, god damn it. <laughs> and like, then puts the rest of their armor on, just starts gathering stuff and getting ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna go to this Delphi thing, right? I, I don't know, what the fuck, well, what are we doing? Yeah, I, I mean, it seems, seems easy enough. We go, we get the book, we get our money. Yeah. Okay, so if I am to assess this correctly, you are proficient as I've seen you with a sword. You have studied magic. You have a shield and you're bringing gadgets. Uh, gadgets is a strong word. <laughs> um, sure, gadgets. Let's go with gadgets. Is the bunny coming as well? He does what he wants. Oh, okay, shaking its head. Oh, he's blessing us with his presence. Um, uh, Devin, you get the sense in your head in that, again, warm, comforting way that you so appreciate when it deigns to bless you. Um, you, you are given the impression 250 gold, and you are given an address of delivery for the codex. Per? Per. Per. Ooh. So this this job pays rather well. We'll we'll each get two hundred and fifty gold. That sounds fantastic. Where was that written? Upon delivery. Well, uh, uh, and I turned with it. Would you like me to write up the contract? Are you making this up? <laughs> no, what you we're um, speaking. The the the, the rabbit is is impressive. <laughs> Uh, Tamalak <laughs> leans on his cane, he's fully in the room now, and he's just staring at Minwoo. Hey. As you fully step into the room, Tamalak, the door swings shut past you, and you all blink, and you are now standing in the forest. Oh, it's gonna be I definitely was grabbing the briefcase of holding. I just want to make <laughs> sure that that was made <laughs> known. You, you declared that you were prepping, so I am saying that you had your gear, and I'm saying cool. that everybody had stuff with them. 100% roll with three on a con check. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I <laughs> well, I rolled a, I roll a four. Am I not used to this yet? <laughs> Who are you standing you next give advantage to on your con check to see if you throw up after teleporting. That's oh, all yes. this is. It has no. Is 14 time. okay, or should I roll the extra? 17. 14. 14, or 19. Uh, or a 19. Okay. Um, everybody's a little queasy, but generally fine, except Stuart. This You've done it twice now yeah. in a very short period of time. You have to go like <laughs> a little bit. Um, you, you get kind of a comforting nuzzle on your ankle from Hyacinth. Uh, and then I'm going to, I'm going to hide behind a tree. <laughs> okay. Just like, I'm gonna be like, throw it up, yeah. and then vanish, or attempt to. <laughs> Great. Is that Okay. I'll take out some, I, Gemma definitely gave me like some ginger, dry ginger yeah. and peppermint oh, yeah. from her herbalism kit. And I'm gonna take that out and then look around for Stuart. <laughs> and he's, he's gone. He's, he's there. <laughs> just just like, that tree. Um, Stuart? Oh, uh, oh, yeah, okay. I thought I was better than that. 
I, I got some herbs if you want some. They're from Gemma. Uh, sure. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> yeah, uh, this. Oh, suppository. <laughs> <laughs> no! No, do not use those herbs for suppository. <laughs> if there's mint in here, that would not be pleasant. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> They're at least more competent than the tabaxi. <laughs> this is, someone is getting you back for this mission. This did, is... you, did your mission go sideways? <laughs> no mission I've been a part of has gone sideways. Well then we are lucky to have you with us. Yeah. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> and you're looking at like a, a about 300 pound, six foot five. <laughs> Half orc who's definitely moving very gingerly, <laughs> yeah. and um, he looks around and tries to recognize where we are. Does it look familiar? Somewhat, yes. Um, you're pretty sure that you are up at the kind of farthest north of the Sword Coast that you can get before you crest out of the forested mountains and start to get close to the spine of the world. I assume the placement here is to place us closer to our goal and that wasn't a result of one of your gadgets? No, my gadgets can't do that. Okay. Not yet, anyway. Well... Rabbit worshiper, is it the rabbit? <laughs> is it the rabbit? Oh yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it should worship be, is such a strong word. It should be noted. I hold reverence for him. He's, he's taught me a great deal. It should, Those are very similar words in my vocabulary. So, and you also do have it on your shield. Yes. Glad you noticed. I, I, I painted them. Mm. Oh, it's very nice. Very Thanks. beautiful. Yeah. You know, we had a, a, oh, never mind. We did not have a vampire in our last group. <laughs> Oh no, totally normal no, human. Totally normal. Absolutely yep. normal human, 100%. Like black a lot. Yeah. Shall we? <laughs> I <laughs> guess if you know where you're going, because um, I'm a sitting person, I don't know. May where. I make a survival check of some yeah. kind to determine which way to start yeah, heading? Absolutely. Oh, can I just ask Hyacinth? Which <laughs> um, uh, sh I mean, you can. I can't guarantee he will answer, but you could try. 18. Nice. Um, you look around the area. Um, you have just been dropped sort of, not in, but adjacent to a clearing in these trees. But you see as you look a little ways past the trees that there does seem to be a road. Hmm. It looks like this was the, we're not gonna drop you into the road because if there's other travelers there, that's gonna potentially cause a problem. So you popped in right near it to be able to uh, continue forward. All right, well, unless anybody else has anything else to do with the rabbit or Does, uh, cleaning do, out bowels. Do you see any um, any evidence of the previous adventuring group? Uh, I believe this is just a well-traveled road. Glance around for freshly dug up soil <laughs> or <laughs> four little mounds. Let me, let me take a quick. Nothing hanging from the trees is a warning. No, not nothing. Nothing in this location. No. Okay, so item at the top of the bill says Codex, and its current owner is I Marcus saw you Delphi. Notes. Marcus Delphi. Okay. So I assume, little furry friend, this way. The rabbit starts hopping toward the road. The last I'll follow. Did, the last mission we were on there were um, alarm spells, so I'm gonna I'll keep an eye out. So I'm gonna cast detect magic and have it up as we walk. Sure. Very nice. I'm just going to let the rabbit lead. I'm gonna open the briefcase and take out the bottle of boundless coffee. Coffee, anyone? <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. Ooh. And I'll also take out some cups. Yeah. <laughs> coffee. Sure. Coffee? How do you like it? Wet. Hot and black? <laughs> yes. Okay, there you go. I, I find I get a little too jittery when I drink coffee, so. Coffee? Yes, please. How do you like it? Everything. I don't, 
I think <laughs> I think sugar, everything. Spices, chocolate. Okay, cool. So I think cinnamon. Whatever. Yeah. Cinnamon. Um, mocha. <laughs> I guess. Dirt. And, and everything <laughs> mango pops out. <laughs> <laughs> just out of the cup. And we just drink coffee as we walk. It's weirdly thick coffee, but like in a nice way? Question <laughs> mark. Um, if you can't stick your spoon up in it, you made it too weak. That's yep. Tomalock walking and just making sure everyone else is drinking the coffee. That after about two minutes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes to the coffee. Okay. A veteran adventurer. <laughs> oh my god. Don't um, trust strange people. You you all uh, head out to the road and start making your way down. As you make your way down the road, you kind of uh, crest out of the trees, and you're still within the forest, but you know it opens up a little bit more in this area. You can see the skyline. You can see the mountains in the distance. In the distance, you can see the snow-capped tops of the spine of the world far, far out. It's a, it's a lovely evening. It's pleasant. Birds are singing. The pattern of the light through the trees is really, you know, sort of lovely. And aside from the fact that you have no idea where you are or what exactly you're supposed to be doing, uh, it's it's not an unpleasant walk. And as you continue on, um, you reach, you know, one of these more cleared out areas where there's sort of some uh, some uh, tree stumps and some uh, looks like the wreckage of a wagon that has been kind of left to the side of the road for a long time has just become kind of a fixture there. Um, and as you sort of pass by, I need everyone to make a perception check. Because this is D&D, and sometimes I remember to have you roll dice. 13. But not, actually. 12. 14. 21. 16. Oh, 17. All right. Uh, Minwoo, especially because you are not jittery from the coffee, you are on high alert because this is weird as heck. Um, you are the first one to notice that the way that the sunlight glints through the trees and kind of shimmers off things, it sort of almost seems to kind of bounce off this long forgotten wreckage onto one of the tree stumps and casts almost like an image that looks like the face of a woman. Points it out. Heads will actually ask you to keep your magical mind <laughs> open yes. and so, uh, alert people towards that. And do they also begin to see it when I point yeah, it out? Yeah, as you pointed out, mm -hmm. especially with the type of subject, as soon as you, your attention is drawn to it, you all start looking at it, and you see as you get closer, it becomes more apparent. Mm hmm. Like this, almost like apparition, materializes. Does it look like something that I am familiar with? Like a when I made the the imps repeat, take a shit, take a shit, take a shit. <laughs> Slightly different than that, I think. But... Uh, a little, a little different, but it does look like something you have seen before. It looks like the image on the handle of the key. Mm. <clears throat> and this is floating over a tree stump? Yes, okay. sort of hovering over this tree stump. And as you guys get closer to it, um, it materializes itself a little more. Mm. The face of a young woman with long golden hair. You're not sure if it's golden because it's actually golden or because of the way the light is creating this apparition. Um, and as you get closer, it begins to speak. My name is Elver Lionheart. My companions and I died trying to retrieve the Celestial Codex. With the last of my magic, I have left this for you. Heed my words, lest you too fall prey to the dangers of Delphi Mansion. Marcos is using the book to conjure an otherworldly being not meant to exist in this world. Meanwhile, his purple-robed cultists busy themselves with eldritch experiments. Beware the creatures that look like puddles of eyes and mouths. Beware the thing that has hooks for hands, and beware the mansion itself, for it transforms. Most of all, stop Marcos before it is too late. My companions and I had a camp on the bluff due south of the mansion. Go there first, you'll find a backpack with a map of the mansion and some notes we acquired from a dubious source. These might help you. May you do better than we. 
as it finishes speaking, it sort of like fades again, not fully gone, but sort of like back to that only hint of the apparition that it was when you all first noticed it. Can I look around the stump area for uh, like any kind of small object that could? Give me a perception check with advantage. No, that doesn't count. It wasn't in the box. That's not in the box. It doesn't count. That's better, I guess. Perception. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, you kind of look around. It takes a moment, but because of the way the sunlight is glistening, you catch the glint in the grass and you find a ring that looks very similar to the one that Priscilla gave you. Okay, uh, I'd like to pick up the ring. Yes. Cool. So we should head to this camp, yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so. Yeah. You all right? Oh, well, you know. <laughs> what we're doing. <laughs> Would... Yeah, a little bit. <clears throat> Seems this seems way more straightforward than the previous one I was. Like. <laughs> well, in a good way. Well, in a tangible way. Uh, this one seems um, kill the cultists, kill the guy, watch out for the hook for hands thing. I mean, the last one I was on, the only thing I had to worry about was being thrown in prison. Oh, oh, we had to we had to worry about upsetting um, rich people. You know, <laughs> one that we were doing. Similar. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Which way is south? <laughs> uh, uh, what do I roll for south? Oh, no, yeah. Um, the sun is setting. Uh, uh, yeah, the sun is he, setting. He yeah. obviously yeah, knows no, which there's way. Like, yeah, <laughs> between <laughs> that and like Minwoo, you already made such a good throw. You you both are just like, it's, 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 that, it's that way. <laughs> you could just start walking. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody would understand the yeah. desire to go. I will start walking south. <laughs> you all uh, start heading south um, over the bluffs. Um, and sure enough, after a little bit of walking, uh, you do spot in the distance what looks like uh, the remains of an adventurer's camp. Uh, by which I mean, there's a bunch of like fabric and some stuff scattered around the ground and like a little, what was maybe like a fire pit or something. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing super fancy, nothing super special, but it's tucked up against the edge of one of the other bluffs, a place that would be kind of sheltered from wind as a place to camp overnight. But this is not a good place to camp. Um, well, as you get closer, uh, you see why they picked this spot, because the other thing that comes into view is a giant fuck-off mansion surrounded by vast, vast stone walls um, rising up in this sort of like little dip of the valley. Definitely one of those places where you're like, ah, some rich dude chose this because it could be easily fortified and guarded and no one's gonna find it unless they're looking for it because we're in the middle of a forest. How long has has it been since the camp was like used? You know, for all the things, my constant complaint with these modules, for all the things that they do tell me, they don't tell me a really obvious thing. Um, it has probably been a couple of a couple of weeks. Oh, this is quickly finding the map and finding a different place to camp. <laughs> uh, would you like to uh, loot the camp, essentially? Yes. I would yes. like to investigate the camp. Okay. If I can see like what might have happened here, has anybody else been here recently? Um, yeah, go ahead and give me investigation checks. Uh, everybody who's hunting for stuff, unless you want to use some other uh, uh, skill to try to do things, in which case, tell me what you do. I'm looting. Great. No! Uh, <laughs> That was a seven. While they're doing that, I'm going to be keeping one, an eye out ten. around the area. Yeah. Ten. Mm. Ten. Oh my god. So do we just take everything 20, with us? Nine. 23 ex <laughs> investigation. <laughs> well, there you go. Nine investigation. Ten. So ten, nine, ten, ten and 23. 23. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, cool. if you see the, the footworks here, I, I follow the footsteps um, yeah. uh, as they hit it <laughs> under this rock here. <laughs> Tedelac, Sloan, and Devin, you start like rifling through things. Um, pretty much what you're finding is 
base bog standard starting adventuring gear. So like, you know, uh, rope, crowbars, uh, you know, Ooh. rations. You never have too many crowbars. A thousand ball bearings. Yes. These <laughs> oh. are going to quit. Oh, <laughs> I got some of those too. Yeah. <laughs> There's only 990 in here. Oh, oh well. Um, well, top me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you're finding a lot of that stuff. So if there's anything of that nature that you want to take with, you know, extra torches, whatever stuff, you're finding a lot of those things. Um, Sir, you just kind of luck out, uh, is that as you pick up and you see everybody else kind of dumping out these bags, you just like glance over and you see like kind of tucked at the edge of one of the kind of collapsed tents under the rock where it's sticking out like just enough to hint that there's something there, but not so much that you would really see it otherwise. You see the little like edge of uh, like a vellum uh, wrapped something, and you just go over and you like move this rock, and sure enough, there's like a cache of papers that have been kind of tucked under there. So you get Ooh. the map and the scribbled notes, which oh. you may distribute or read your yeah. own. Uh, hey, would that. you like to read something? <laughs> I have little use for paper. I don't have right. maps, so the like for the you know big screen. So the least I can do is give my players props. Min Wu. This campsite was made by paupers, <clears throat> ill prepared for that compound. Yeah. Might I add, our companions <clears throat> seem ill prepared for the compound ahead. Do you have a plan? I mean, I would say the problem with the Golden Vault kind of deal is that they leave you with that little information until you get there. You see Hyacinth is just like sitting in a corner, has gotten into some sort of edible something, you're not sure what it is, and just kind of looks up and just like nods very sagely, like, yep, that's, that is a big problem. And the fact that she did say that this is dubious information. I don't know how much we can trust this, but uh, Marcus has a room on the third floor where he prepares stuff. Marcus has a room on the third floor where he performs rituals. A cavernous room underneath the basement contains four large crystals. Question mark, question mark, question oh, mark. Crystals? <laughs> it, it, it appears one of them might be a pyramid as well. Well. <laughs> for according to this map, uh, four crystals uh, that surround a pyramid-type shape and clearly an arcane sigil of some sort, uh, in a fa very nice figure eight. In the uh, in the sketch, is that I don't know. Can you read that magic, or is it just a scribble? Uh, from here, it's just a scribble. Mm. This piece of paper just says Windows Croc Lamar on it, in quotes. Um, as you say Croc Lamar, you hear the <laughs> of lightning from like in thunder from seemingly nowhere, and everything just gets dim for like a second and then goes back to normal. That. Uh, wait, wait. Hyacinth stops eating and immediately like looks up over their shoulder. Okay, that, that, that had to have been a coincidence. Wait, the windows of... Is that in a language I recognize? Oh. Uh, what languages do you... We definitely see? thought that started with a C. Here, I only recognize... Uh, it wouldn't be angelic. Croclamar. Stop like that! Her. What if we all said it at once? <laughs> what would happen? Uh, if we can see them, they can see us. Can we, <laughs> can we move away? It's, get, it's getting dark out right now, right? It's getting... Uh, the sun is setting. Yeah, we need to... This better. is not a good place to stay. What does this have to do with windows? <laughs> lightning would destroy windows a lot. Was it to lightning get or just thunder? Uh, because there is still sunlight out, it's hard to tell if there was a flash of lightning, but you definitely heard the crack of thunder, and it's almost like the lights flickered. <laughs> no, sense of where they, no sense of where it landed? Nope. Uh, I feel. I... Does it sound familiar to me, Prop Lamar? Uh, <laughs> hang on, I have to. Sorry, I have to look at some character sheets real quick. Is it common or halfling? I only speak dwarvish, <laughs> elvish, and common. Um, I don't think it is familiar to anyone at this table. 
Stuart speaks it's... under common and deep speech. Orc. I so right now. And thieves can't. There's certain knowledge I don't have access to, but it might be familiar. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this is this a... is deep speech. Yeah. Or at least like it. It might be. It's at least adjacent to deep yeah. speech. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like deep speech. Um, Here. You make use of it. I'm what does gonna, it mean, Stuart? Uh, Any studies yeah. in your books? You're not even sure if it is. You're not sure if it yeah. is directly, but like, of the languages that you, it's that thing of like, when you've studied a romance language, you could recognize oh. other yeah. romance languages. It's a little bit like that, where because you know deep speech, oh. you're like, this has some construction similar to that. I don't know if it is that, because it's not a word you know. Yeah, it's but, Spanish deep speech. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, yeah, when I was at the watch, I I, I chose a specialty of of protecting you against uh, those coming from the underdog. And this is a conjuration of the underdog of some kind. I mean, it definitely has a, a feeling of that sorts. Okay. Like somebody started to draw something there, and then. Um, mm. Castle R. <laughs> are we are we approaching under cover of darkness, or are we finding somewhere away from here to plan? I mean, it's surrounded by a giant stone wall, so. I mean, there's also a gate. I mean, I just want to be clear, like. We could also go in. I don't know. This has worked for us in the past. We go in, get a lay of the land, and come back out and make a plan. That sounds wise. I'm not interested in the plans of dead men, so maybe we form our own, but this reconnaissance could be useful. Well said. I agree. How, how tall is the wall? Like 10 feet. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Just vault over it. That's fine. It, uh, as you, uh... Devin is a very heavy set guy. As you know, <laughs> and, and he's in heavy ring armor that yeah. chanks around. He's kind of, oh. As you look at the wall, uh, I'll give you all this for free. There's enough experience collectively here. You don't need to roll for this. Just as you kind of, like, studied the wall from your vantage point, um, this wall absolutely could be fortified. Currently, it looks like it is aesthetic. It does not look like there, you know, it is not being patrolled. It does not look like it has been fortified particularly. It looks like it's just kind of there. How far away is it from us? Um, from where you guys are right now, it's like, it's over yonder, <laughs> if you will. You, um, you get the sense that this camp was set up where they could kind of keep an eye on the gates and keep an eye on, like, the upper floors for, like, watching for, like, lights and movement, but they're a little bit hidden behind, they can kind of, like, tuck behind these bluffs to sort of be a little bit hidden by getting low to the ground. So it's, 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 this is an easy, like, you can take, like, ten minutes and jog over and be at the wall, but you've got some cover from where you are right now. Hmm. Why don't you decide? I mean, they obviously, they, they know that uh, adventurers are coming, right? So, we really don't have Well, to... you said that word how many times? <laughs> three, it was said. It was said three times. It three was four. I feel Which like word? it was four. Grab no, <laughs> Lights flicker. The lightning's only happened four times. <laughs> It might have been said five, but it only happened four. They know we're coming. <laughs> okay. Is, um. is there anywhere on the map that looks like it would house a, a codex? Beneath the house. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's the magic portion in the bottom. Uh, he does, according to that, rituals on the third floor, which... There is an interesting throne-looking thing on the third floor. I mean... Is in throne. I mean, the um, it looks like yeah. a round tub of some sort. So, oh, so that might be the bathroom. I'm curious. Because oh, that's our target. <laughs> they've been able Light to map bathroom. out a good portion of all of this, and yet they are not here. So well, how did this? No, get they out? got they got that map from someone. Uh, Those are their notes. Oh, is this the, the dubious is... info? Can I? Is the ring mm. still playing the message? Um, as you as you have approached the camp, this kind of like faint shimmering of this apparition has sort of like drifted along with you as you have had the ring. Mm -hmm. It is not still playing it, 
or anything, but it seems to have sort of like, I'll say followed you or kind of come alongside you. It's just kind of there. Okay. About 10 feet away. We were also, we were also told that mm, the, uh, the, the castle, the, it changes shapes, it changes around you. Oh, that's true, yeah. Uh, perhaps that, this is the, perhaps this is the code word for when it um, changes. So that if you need a window, you say this word, mm. and perhaps a window shows up. And everyone inside probably knows still something happened. I think that's a very generous assessment of the information we have. I'm, I'm loath to trust what, you know, was told to us as dubious information. Might I propose we send the bunny? Oh, I, I mean, I, I could go. Uh, well, if, if we're sending anyone to sneak ahead, that's, that's totally my bollywick. Oh, oh, no. what? <laughs> Uh, it's my expertise. Why did you say the other word? <laughs> because it's a fun word. Bollywick? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what people say. Why don't you just say you sneak well? That sounds weird. <laughs> sneak well. A sneak well, I mean. <laughs> How about your sneak skill? Oh, my, sh my skill in sneak is pretty good. There we go. We got the S's in there. What's better, your vocabulary or your sneak skill? <laughs> <laughs> my investigation, actually. Um, Interesting non-answer. Well, I, I still say we vote for the bunny. Uh, everybody give me a perception check. <laughs> and how they Oh, nat 13. one. Ooh, that two. Which is a four. Uh, which is you a guys five. are very focused on uh, debating Stuart's vocabulary. What'd you get? 14. Five. 13. 17. 17. Uh, you notice because you no longer feel that presence in the back of your brain. Oh. Hyacinth is not here. Well, good for him. I won't say anything. <laughs> I, you know, the, the, the rabbit, Hyacinth, uh, doesn't really have a way of communicating information to us. Well, why don't we ask it? It seems that that one can talk to it. Oh, well, Hyacinth, Count Hyacinth. Oh. I don't think he's here anymore. What do you roll for, uh, <laughs> Deception? Like, Deception. obvious? I'm not terrible at it. Yeah, 13. Uh, he, he almost, and then he like cracks himself up a little too much with the performance of it, and uh, you guys look around and you all re realize that the rabbit is not with you right now. Or at least you don't see him. He comes and goes as he pleases. He is very busy. The wisest one in the bunch. <laughs> see, that tells me I should leave. I, I, don't, I don't think so, hon. Mm. I think you gotta stay here. Mm. We need you, come on. You got your pretty shield. Yeah. No died. Okay. We're gonna be fine. Mm. Mm. Go. So. Lauren, roll me a d4. D4. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, that's gonna be a one. One. Um, as you all are kind of looking around at each other and having this sort of discussion. You suddenly just feel the air sort of become weighty. As though almost like a fog suddenly rolling in. No visible change, but you just feel that like pressure change. Everything feels kind of heavy and dense. And you glance up toward where the mansion is and you see lights starting to pop on in some of the upper, upper rooms in the upper floors where you can uh, see over the walls as the sun is continuing to drop behind the hills. And people with dark vision, sorry. Uh, I, Sloan and Tommy, you are, you are like, it is a little bit like looking through night vision goggles instead of dark vision. Like it's, it's fading, you're getting toward the end of it, but it's definitely still that little like, oh God, oh, this is not pleasant. It was fine when you were in daylight, now that it's getting darker, it's, Ow. It's a little funky. What was in that oh. coffee? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I... Cinnamon, No, that was yours, dear. Some dirt. No, I didn't put dirt in oh, yours. Oh, that, okay. <laughs> my eyes are funky. Kind of like adjust my glasses. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Trying to dial it in. Figure Not out. shakeable off a boy. Um, it'll it's it'll fade very shortly. You're, you can tell it's starting to kind of drift, but you're still getting these weird little like almost neon okay. flashes. Well, before it gets super dark, since some of us don't exactly have great vision at night, maybe we should and we don't have to light any lights. Yeah, mm. progress before we lose sunlight. Uh, its current state, I am in no use to anyone. Yeah, I'm sort of in and out as well. I, it's kind of there, but it's not. I. It's a weird glare. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm a little worried about all five of us going in at once, though. That's kind of difficult to to manage. Might be a little loud. Uh, 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 let me uh, just go up to the wall, I'll sneak up, and then I'll just take a peek for a little while, and then I'll come back. I won't go I, over the wall. I have no attachment to that one, send it. Oh. All right, I mean, if you're, do you need anybody else, or are you good? I can follow at a distance and warn you if I see anything. Uh, I'm gonna send Theo with you. Sure, yes. Who's Theo? Uh, Theo is the snake. The mechanical snake. So this, so Theo kind of like slithers up to you, to your foot. Is he going to tug on my pants? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he uh, uh, slithers up, kind of looks and wraps himself around the outside of your pants like an anklet, but then kind of like looks at you like, like, is this okay? Yeah, yeah all right. Let's do this. Mm. You're not vegan, are you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, he eats coal. Well... Okay. Not exactly meat, so I think that's vegan. vegan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll roll stealth, but I'm keeping at a distance, so it doesn't matter, right? This is just. To... Um, you're you're kind of keeping watch. Yeah, but I'm gonna try and move in closer yeah. so I can watch. Uh, I need ten minutes though. I'm gonna do detect magic bef- yeah. as a ritual before getting close. I will say if you. I will say you can just roll a perception check because you're mm. going to keep enough distance that it's not too okay. so You can just do a perception to see stuff. But yeah, take your 10 minutes. You ritually cast Detect Magic. And that, and that lasts know. 10 minutes or that lasts an hour? <laughs> Concentration up to 10 minutes. So I will, uh, I'll do ritual and yeah. sneak. Cool. Yeah. Uh, give me, uh, go ahead, you can give me a stealth check since you're climbing the wall, see if anything wildly crazy happens. Uh, nine. Nine. Um. You're climbing the wall. I feel like I should also make you do I, a climb check. Well, I'll use mean, the rope. You use the rope, great, yeah. advantage on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you pop the rope, you, uh, you climb up. Uh, it is not your most graceful climb overall. There's definitely, uh, but also as you get closer, you realize this wall is in a bit of disrepair, and that's what's making a lot of the noise is that you're like trying to kind of use the rope and kind of brace off of it, and just things keep just crumbling. Um, I do hope his investigation is better than his climbing. <laughs> can we see it? We can see you. Yeah. I mean, as as the sun is sinking behind the hills, we're we're now in like dusk. We're not. This is not like pitch black night. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is light coming from inside the building, so you guys are still kind of catching uh, the end of this. Uh, those of you who are having the dark vision issues, it finally settles. It goes away, and now you guys have a little bit better uh, look. What's going on? Um, but yeah, uh, I almost called you Donovan. Jesus, nice. Stuart. Uh, you get uh, you're you're just kind of going up to the top of the wall and like surveying yeah. things, basically. Yeah. This, if it's dark outside and there's lights inside, I want to see movement or what's happening. Yeah. Um, uh, go ahead and give me. A, we'll call it an investigation check because you are switch dice. As he dips over mm-hmm. the wall. Um, Tomalak nudges Min and goes, five silver, we never see him again. I'll bump it up to a goal. <laughs> um, I think Sloane is not paying attention to that at all, or else they would have said something. Uh, I would like to ritual cast identify on the, on the ring. Sure. So, uh, six investigation, four, oh wait. Eight investigation, four perception. Six perception. Terrible. 
Cool. Um, <laughs> here's the thing, Stuart. It was a really good idea, and you're really good at both of these things. But also your timing just ended up being awful, that it's right as the sun dips behind, and so everything is just kind of backlit. So you just lose a lot. That's that's what this comes down to. You do see um, that there are some lights that have popped on inside. Um, so you know that there is someone or something in there. Maybe it's just a timer spell that turns the lights on at dusk. Who knows, right? Um, you're not, like, seeing a lot of activity or movement, so. Um, and as you sort of, like, glance around, you really do get the sense, especially now that you're up on it and kind of looking around it, this wall is kind of just here, uh, has not been maintained to serve a purpose. Um, you also can now, from this vantage point, see over kind of toward where the road is, because you've deviated off a little bit to get to this camp, where the road is, there is, like, just a big open archway that leads through the wall that is fully open right now. There are no doors or portcullis or anything. And you can see at the front of the mansion, there is just a big set of double doors um, that leads inside. Does not appear to be guarded in any way. There is nobody out and about. It's just there. All right. No uh, movement around the uh, grounds. It's all inside the house. All right. I'll head back. Jaunt. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, there's lights in the... Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happens? He hands him a gold piece. Nothing. Tell us of your findings. Huh? Uh, uh, there's lights on. Uh, the, the the wall is in terrible repair. Uh, we can see that from over here. Did you find anything else? Uh, there's no gate or anything. So you can just walk around the wall if you want. Did you come across any other beings? Nope. Uh, the door is unguarded. There's no one outside. Seems uh, totally safe. I don't completely trust that you were unseen. Devin, roll me a d20. Just flat. Uh, yeah. With the cursed dice. Sure, if you want. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 12. <laughs> You're mediocre. You sicken me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you feel the warm presence in the back of your brain again. I say nothing. <laughs> but I give a slight, like, I make that sound. Yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> pauses. Just to stop <laughs> shining <laughs> and just to, like, turn and acknowledge the sound. And then he goes back. <laughs> so you... <laughs> Certain you were unseen? No. <laughs> no. Just a casual stroll through the woods then? Well, no, I was attempting to be sneaky and, you know, things happen here and there. Any inroads you would suggest based on your findings? Does the map make any more sense now? Uh. From what you were able to see, the general like shape and tiers of the map match up to what you're seeing externally. For whatever that's worth. Sloan. Yes. You cast your identify. Mm -hmm. um, essentially what you are able to figure out is that this seems to be a, a ring of spell storing mm -hmm. and what probably this is because this Apparition is not a spell. Mm. So your best guess is that this is one of those things you've heard tell of where an item that was used by the owner enough kind of has some attachment to them and they were able to push the last bit of their magic into almost like leaving this recording through the ring for someone to find. Okay. The apparition itself does not appear magical in nature, so you're not sure if that's a ghost okay. or something else. But is it, it is still not... following us? It's still there. It's just chilling. Okay. Well, we're not going to get any more information from outside of the mansion if that is the most we could ascertain from what you got and yeah. what they got. I mean, do we want to head in? Sorry, just quick yeah. clarification. Am I able to tell with Identify if the Ring of Spell Storing has any spells stored in it? It does not. Okay. They have all been expended. Okay. 
well, as quietly as we can. No, but I suppose we have to anyways. Yeah, quiet's good. Uh. <laughs> looks at his armor. You're gonna be fine, it's mm. fine. I'm using guidance. And Sloane's gonna like, press a few buttons on their gauntlet, kind of adjust the little opal, get ready to go in. And like, some weird stuff happens, kind mm -hmm. of shimmers a little bit. Okay, are we good? Mm hmm Tightens a few straps, makes sure they're closer to the body, and gets ready to go. So tightens his leather straps. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you all shake and get all, gets all the jingles out. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets uh, very, very stealthy. Uh, and as you continue walking down with this light ch 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 from Death It's a light, arm. it's a light. Yeah, it's like chain mail. I could make, I could take this off and make the noise. Well, it's more like ring mail, but. Fine, be that uh, specific. Um, you all head off down the road toward the mansion and this is where we are going to take our break. <laughs> so everybody, please stick around. We will be back very, very shortly to see what the results of this uh, stealth roll that I'm going to make them all make are and whether they get into the mansion and what they might find there. We'll be back as soon as six people can use one bathroom. Can so I keep that? Yes. Yes. Is that your first roll? <laughs> I'll leave.